Hello again, and welcome to the third and final installment of my blow-by-blow -blow review of Archetypes with Megan, Episode 2, Diva, with Mariah Carey. And that element of self-authorship has always been a kind of part of the mythos of the diva. The diva exercises a degree of agency that's typically withheld from women and femmes and minoritized people, and that degree of agency disrupts normative social constructs and normative social patterns, and therefore produces a lot of uh, social discomfort. I think on the rare occasions when people do use diva in a phrase like, stop being such a diva, <laughs> they're playfully reminding their friends to not be obnoxiously over-demanding. They're not criticizing a person who has refused to accept social inequalities, be they gender-based, sexuality-based, race-based, whatever. <laughs> Absolutely no one ever said, Rosa Parks, what a diva. Harvey Milk, diva. Look, and this is your story to tell, certainly not mine, but I would imagine that becoming a diva then is aspirational from the world that you came from. You describe as a child, you then go, I want to be that. And then, then, even when it's being used against you, it almost feels like there were moments where you played into it because it does feel like it's a, a bit of a, like a defense mechanism and a coat of arms. You're like, I'm going to own this. I just have to pause. Uh, <laughs> here we have a member of the British royalty who doesn't know what a coat of arms is. <laughs> it's, you meant a suit of armor, Megan. Okay, Megan is pretending that Mariah Carey as a child deeply considered the definition of the word diva and actively sought to grow into one? I doubt that. I agree with you, but I think on top of that, it's also for laughs, as me and my fans say. Yes! Like, it's honestly half of it, half of it is just for laughs. Thank you, Mariah. <laughs> diva is not a dirty word. Diva is not a rude affront. It's good, it's bad, and it's usually a joke. And I think that's really important for people to remember that there might be this persona. And yes, the diva mm -hmm. thing we can play into. I mean, it's not something that I connect to, but if for you, it's been a huge you part of your diva moment sometimes. I like what kind of diva moments do I give you? <laughs> And there's the infamous short circuit. Megan can dish it out, but she can't take it. She's redeeming the word diva, but she doesn't want you to call her a diva. Let's pretend that you didn't, weren't so beautiful and didn't have the whole thing and didn't often have gorgeous ensembles. <laughs> Mariah, with a backhanded compliment. There's a big difference, isn't there? When Mariah shows up draped in cashmere and canary diamonds, we say diva in a positive way because she earned every cent of it. When Megan shows up draped in cashmere and diamonds, <laughs> if anyone called Megan a diva, it's because they were too polite to call her a gold digger, a leech, a user, or a climber. Megan should be flattered that Mariah is kindly using the word diva for this. The diva thing evolves and it continues to evolve and I play with it. It's for laughs. It's yes, some of it is very real because I am walking around like this right now in my house. I promise you. You're doing it for yourself and you're doing it because it's how you like to show up. And I think there's something that people find really threatening about a woman who is so secure in who she is that you go, I don't even know what you have to say about this. This is how I want to turn up. I don't... I don't even know if I'm in that place yet, right? Megan, are you saying you weren't fully confident when you went to Harlem <laughs> in a quarter million dollars of jewelry and <laughs> head to toe Max Mara? I would be shocked if she had any self-awareness of the type. Megan, it's not about wearing whatever you want. It's about reading the room. Mariah's fans pay good money, hundreds, thousands of dollars to see her sing. They want the diva. You are pretending to do charity work. People strive for divadom. We revel in it. Oh man, I love it. She is so Mariah. Ew, Megan, you can't come up with a compliment for Mariah Carey. What are the three words? If you could use it to describe yourself in three words as a young girl, what three words would those be? Mm. I don't have just three words. That's why people have to buy my memoir and watch the adaptation. Oh, I've been wondering why Mariah would stoop to Megan's level. Now I get it. To plug her book that Megan didn't even do her the favor of mentioning. And then today, three words to describe you today. Exhausted, angry, yet hopeful. Mimi, don't waste your energy. She's a lost cause. Though my fangirling was tempered today, I um, kind of think she could tell. But that aside... 
it was all going swimmingly. That's a generous self-appraisal, Megan. You are not good at this. <laughs> Until that moment happened, which I don't know about you, but it stopped me in my tracks when she called me a diva. I just kept thinking in that moment, was my girl crush coming to a quick demise? Does she actually not see me? Oh my gosh, because the only reason you like people is what they can do for you, including flatter you and portray you in a lovely light. She meant diva as a compliment, but I heard it as a dig. I heard it as the word diva as I think of it. <laughs> so I don't watch enough HG Tutor to understand where does Megan figure on the narcissist spectrum? She doesn't seem wholly self-aware. She obviously takes any commentary, certainly all critique, as criticism or even insult, asks the rest of us to accept her paranoid reactions as both based in reality and telling about the state of the world, and even in this self-explanation, feels the need to control the narrative, feels the need to correct what she fears will be negative opinions, but still blames it on the word, still blames it on the word meaning something different for each of us. She doesn't blame her reaction on her total lack of humor. It's not the word's fault, Megan. And it actually made me realize that in these episodes, as I've opened the door for conversations surrounding the archetypes that try to hold us back, what I hadn't considered was that for some, reclaiming the words is what they feel will propel us forward. Are you going to try to wriggle out of this N-word accusation by telling us it's actually a good thing in the next podcast? As ever, I'm Megan, and I can't wait to be with you again next week. Archetypes is a Spotify original. So I wanted to listen to the credits this time, just to see if Megan even has the respect for her crew to record the credits herself. No, she doesn't. My final thoughts, better than the Serena episode. We heard more from Mariah, but I also think that's because Mariah took control. As ever, I'm Ibble Dibble. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Um.